I'm not sure about uh, about what you think. Spending uh, a whole morning and a whole afternoon with banks, financial institutions, fintech startups. It all starts to look a little bit like a like a love story. Hey, who, who has seen uh, the movie Casablanca? Yeah, yeah. Remember, it's um, I think it's uh, Ingrid Bergman. Am I right? And she ends up in Casablanca, and you have the famous sentence, "Of all the gin joints in the world, she walks straight into mine." I think that's Humphrey Bogart. But but the movie ends with the words, "I think this is the beginning of a very good friendship," and then the the aeroplane leaves, and then you cry. No, but um, the beginning of a very good friendship, that's uh, something that stuck in my mind when we prepared for collaboration between fintech and banks. Because the fintechs need the banks, the banks need the fintechs, so they collaborate and they form a partnership. Or do they? They're also competitors and there's also risk involved and a lot of partnerships end in divorce, as some of you maybe know. And that costs a lot of money. So, very interesting to deep dive into the topic of collaboration and to find out what makes it successful and how it can become a failure, what the risks are, how do you organize collaboration between ban banks and fintechs. And for this discussion, um, I think we have an elite panel. We have some really great people in our panel for the coming half hour. And I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to introduce them one by one uh, for you. Number one in our panel, very high on the fintech power list in the UK, an innovator to watch, a mentor for fintech startups, former HelloFresh marketeer, and currently leading the European expansion of Feeder Bank. Please welcome Sophie Gibo. This is the moment where you clap. <laughs> Number two, very experienced marketeer, mentor, executive, and entrepreneur and the driving force of open innovation at BBVA, please meet Gustavo Finzau. <laughs> Number three in our panel is uh, ex McKinsey partner. He's a banker, a publisher of very valuable LinkedIn posts. I've read them all. He's uh, responsible for the multi-channel and digit digitization of UBS Switzerland. Please meet Andreas Gulli. Then number four in our panel, he is the co-founder and also the former CEO of one of the first and very successful fintechs, MoneyU. You probably all know it. It's now 100% daughter of ABN AMRO. He's marketeer. He's front runner in the digital age. And at this moment, he's the chief digital officer of ABN AMRO. Please meet Frank Verkerk. <laughs> Last but not least, I call him the dawn of digital He's a fintech investor. He's also the COO of Moven. Please meet Mircea Miescu. <laughs> wow, after such long introductions, you were basically done. So this was it. <laughs> Sophie, I'd like to start with you. Um, Vidor, very interesting uh, concept. You call yourself a community bank. And one of your mottos is banking with friends. How does that work when you work with other banks? Yeah. How does the friendship look? Yeah. And so how do you organize it? Very happy to talk about that. Please? To be able to talk about the collaboration with bank, I need to tell you a bit about the story of Fidor. So Fidor is an online bank that was launched back in 2007 based on the principles that we should put customers at the center of the decision-making process. To do so, we have developed an online community where people can ask and answer questions around personal finance. But on the other side of this community, we let also our customers interact uh, and tell us basically what they would like us to launch next. Since early on, we have also integrated fintech companies uh, onto our platform for two reasons. The first reason is that it has enabled us to go uh, faster uh, on the market and lower the cost. As an example, I can talk about our partnership with Currency Cloud that is powering all our international payments. 
But on the other side, we have worked uh, very early on with fintech uh, by integrating them directly onto our platform and referring our own clients to uh, their, um, basically referring our own clients uh, to these fintechs, thinking that like people wanted an aggregated place to uh, see all their finances at uh, the same place, and uh, it's where we are heading towards with Fidor Bank, a marketplace. But that's not it. So we have a retail banking offering. We have a corporate banking offering. And uh, over the past few years, we have seen an increasing number of banks, telecom, and fintech companies reaching out to use our banking platform to be able to use the community model uh, the uh, finance uh, bay model, the finance marketplace model, or uh, the full stack and uh, some uh, some companies willing to launch their own digital banking offering. And what's your trick? How do you convince them to work with you? Because well, you're also a competitor. We uh, have actually two separate uh, companies and uh, it hasn't been about convincing them. Like They came to us because they like the model and we uh, are targeting a specific target market which is people interested in personal finance where community and marketplace can, uh, attra like, can uh, be used for plenty of other uh, niche segments, basically. BBVA, Gustavo, would you work with Sophie? <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> 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 on my side, yes, for sure. No, uh, you're, we are touching a very important uh, uh, topic here. Um, interaction between big corporations, big banks, the incumbents you were uh, saying, and, and startups. And uh, I have to say that we've been trying to do that for years now. Is it successful? Yeah, definitely, definitely. What's definitely. your trick? Well, I would say that uh, the, the, the main thing is we, we, we try to uh, build mutually beneficial relationships and we try to do it in a, in a, very, in a very true way. I mean, we, we really try to do that. And we've been doing that for years now. So uh, our startup program, for example, BBVA Open Talent, started back in 2008, is now in the eighth uh, edition and in fact, it's open for submission right now. And, uh, and so we, we've been learning a lot about how to interact with startups. We've been uh, living uh, not, not, not just parallel life, but in, 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 in many moments, we've been uh, working together uh, again for years now. So, so yeah, the, the trick I would say is to uh, try to build uh, mutually beneficial uh, relationships, and, uh, and, and that's easy if you really try to, to do. But uh, how about your clients? Uh, what did they notice from all this uh, collaboration, all the sweetness with, mm. the, with the startups and the fintechs? How did it get better for the client? Yeah, well, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's the main thing. I mean, we are, we are interacting with the, the ecosystem outside BBVA because we realized uh, years ago that you cannot innovate by your own. Uh, so we are trying to address innovation through an open innovation model. Uh, most of the big industries have been disrupted from outside. So uh, we are trying to partner the best ones and, uh, and, uh, and that is going to end up being part of the value proposition. Andres, you also have uh, experience, I think, with working with uh, Bexio and uh, SumUp. What was a success factor for you in those collaborations? Um, I think there were many. I think the first one, I mean, maybe starting a little pick bit. Two. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I, I think one is uh, pick the right one. So, uh, so in the end, uh, kind of, you know, uh, the, the, the honeymoon can be very nice, but at some point in time there will be reality. So having picked the right one, I think, is important. Uh, and then maybe the second one is, uh, is uh, looking at startups uh, as, as partners on the same level. Uh, I think that's what does that mean at the same level? That means that uh, uh, on the on the one side that they have kind of equal rights. So you know it's not it's not kind of a 60,000 company dealing with a 20 people company. So it's kind of the same level. But it also means that uh, when you when you deal with with each other, that you try to build you know a, a team a negotiation team that is similar on both sides. So you know if you have uh, if you take the, the full strength of the bank and put this full strength on a startup. The startup will die on the day of the first negotiation. 
Sophie, have you ever been in a situation where a partnership didn't go through because you had a feeling it wasn't a level playing field or you were just uh, too small to deal with that uh, big partner? Yeah, I, uh, I think like as so I'm mentoring quite a lot of uh, like not personally I didn't get that experience, but I'm mentoring quite a lot of startups in uh, in London, especially uh, startups that are offering white label solution to banks, and it's what we were all discussing uh, together yesterday. Like sometimes it's very difficult to figure out who's the good person to talk to, and the startup can be dead before uh, they found the good person and the partnership is made. So it's not about banks having bad intention towards the startup is more about helping the, the startup navigate towards the key decision maker and it's what Gustavo yeah. is doing with Open Talents. Interesting. Frank, you also have uh, quite a bit of experience, I think, in uh, yeah, looking at startups, uh, looking, with, looking at fintech, working with them. Uh, what does ABN have to offer that, uh, that community? I think that we have to offer that we uh, really uh, want to cooperate. Uh, I think that we have experience, and it looks a little bit like some of the things that I've heard, that we need to adapt uh, ourselves to be able to work together with, uh, with fintechs. Uh, and I think we be are becoming more and more successful. Uh, on the other hand, what we have to offer is a lot of uh, knowledge and a lot of client and a lot of client knowledge. And you see, uh, I think we have multiple examples. Uh, once we have started our cooperation, uh, uh, our clients get better offerings and the fintech learns much more about what's really happening in the market. And where did you have to adapt in order to make the cooperation successful? I, what I changes like, did you have to make? I like this metaphor about the relationship. I think that uh, uh, it's a lot about if you just have the big corporation and the big legal departments uh, in uh, when you want to talk to a fintech, uh, it doesn't fit their, uh, the front door of their company. Uh, sometimes, uh, uh, for real, uh, uh, we paid the legal counsel from the fintech to make sure that they could read our contracts. And so you really need to adapt and make sure... Uh, Sounds a bit dangerous. <laughs> no, it's not dangerous. Uh, we just needed to find a, a better way to uh, get our contracts in a way that it's also workable for a fintech. So we've solved it, of course. I'm not paying all these bills all the time. But sometimes you need to adapt. And, uh, and the other way is also for the fintech, fintech to adapt. I think that uh, in the best corporations, the fintechs who uh, really have a very clear focus on what the value is they deliver for their customers or their market, those are the best ones to cooperate with. Mirchu, you also have uh, quite some experience uh, onboarding uh, third parties on your on your on your platform. Um, do you see big banks approaching Moven, or is it especially the smaller ones that need your help in a digitization? There are two kinds of banks that um, that work with us and contact us, and of course we tell them all the time we don't compete with banks. Yeah, we are small; we cannot compete with. I don't know, 50,000 banks around the world. It's not that kind of industry. Uh, but there are two kinds, and one is we like and one we don't. Yeah, we aren't, The ones that we don't like are the ones that we like us to come, spend a week with them, unpaid, and tell them everything that we do. That maybe in the future they will do something with us. I call that free training for bankers. Yeah? And we try not to do that. We are... I'm of the firm belief that the best collaboration is based on a paid invoice. Yeah? So uh, what we want is uh, they look at what we have and decide if our solution is something they can benefit from. And of course they can always build it their own. Yeah? Like big banks like ABN, like UBS, can do everything themselves and even they are smart and BBVA, they are smart to look at what's available in the market and take solutions that are out there more uh, forward thinking that uh, what can be generated inside the bank. But there are still very many banks that uh, think that uh, uh, all good ideas come from inside the bank. You know the not invented here syndrome. If it's not my idea, it's probably a very bad one. And these are the kind of banks that we don't work with. At the same time, we have close to 100 banks that call us all the time. Yeah? our challenge is to separate uh, the, the ones that want free training from the ones that really mean business. It's a nice problem to have. Yeah. You can, uh, you can pick and choose. Yeah, I hope. Humphrey Bogart couldn't do that. Yeah. <laughs> Frank, Frank, do you have uh, ever dealt with the not invented here uh, syndrome from, from your team? 
If you, if your question, if I've ever felt it, uh, yes, yes, ever. Uh, yeah. I think today. To, yeah, no, but I <laughs> think that yes. you need to grow out of it. I think that uh, over the years, I can see that uh, uh, more and more people uh, at ABN are convinced that we need to uh, work more, much more complementary. Some things we are very good at ourselves, and some things uh, other people or other companies can do much better than we. I think it's a very good thing to really focus on what your own strength is and combine it with other uh, companies' strengths. And I see that we are growing in that way. But of course, there are areas also within ABN AMRO where there are still people who think that they are best. And sometimes they are, and sometimes they are not anymore. Andreas, so in any partnership... Mele, in a sense, you've invited here three people that are at the forefront of the right thing to do. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Applause. <laughs> Um, one thing that just crosses my mind, in, in any par partnership there's always the discussion about who owns the China, right? Did it come from your family? Did it come from my family? You know, who owns that stuff? Um, from, your, from your experience, uh, Andreas, what's the best way to set these collaborations up? Is it joint ventures? Do you need to take a stake, equity uh, in the fintech business? Is it purely a contract between parties? What works? Uh, it really depends what you want to achieve. So what we try really to achieve is a, is a better offering for our clients. So it's not, it's not an investment, but it's a better offering of the client. So the key thing to do that is, is a contract, uh, typically. Uh, there, there might be an equity uh, stake to secure the contract, but there are also other ways to secure the contract. So the key thing is really the, the contract and that you have a, a both sides, a kind of a, it's a strategic partnership, you need to have a governance around the, the, the strategic partnership, that's the, that's the core element for us. Gustavo, you also work that way, or do you always take a stake in the companies would, that you work with? Yeah, I would say that we uh, we've been trialing different different approaches to uh, to kickstart and, and and to nurture that uh, relationship with the, the external ecosystem. So we've been uh, uh, investing in some startups and learning a lot out of the, what is happening out there. Uh, we've, uh, we we have decided to acquire a few. Uh, uh, very interesting startups uh, in cases in which we we thought that that would speed up the process uh, of uh, us transforming or uh, we, we would be bringing some specific talent in some cases or technology so we've been doing those two things but we we we've been also trying to uh, collaborate in other in other ways we've been doing proof of concepts out of the finalists and winners of BBA open talent uh, throughout the, the 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 last years and and most of all uh, the previous edition and uh, in, in 2015 and, and 2014 some of the winners uh, were really really good we ended up uh, Trialing those uh, those uh, startups and doing proof of concept, and in some cases, uh, one example is Secure, uh, one uh, BBA Open Talent 2014 in the in uh, for the region of uh, North America and the rest of the world, and they are now providing uh, digital identity and fraud detection for BBA uh, Compass in the states and for Simple Bank, and we are trying to do similar in in, in other countries. So we've been trialing different approaches, and I have to say we've been learning a lot and. Pro and 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 uh, and uh, and capturing value out of uh, all of those different alternatives. Yeah, absolutely. It seems that uh, all the banks are very active in 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 looking for the next best thing, uh, organizing open innovation, embarking on journeys together with fintechs. Um, where is this all going to end? What's the what, what's the financial landscape going to look like? Uh, Sophia, may I ask you: Is there going to be some sort of consolidation again? Or are we going to see a very complex landscape of everybody working with everybody? Well, I don't think uh, consolidation is for right now, but uh, I would say that PSD2, uh, like the arrival of PSD2 and open banking, means that there will be more and more collaboration. I think the past uh, five years were probably the era of the competition uh, or and then the Competition and now we are going more towards yeah, competition colla collaboration. So uh, I think uh, yeah, it's where the movement is going. But uh, consolidation, uh, yeah, it should take a long, a lot more time for that. Yeah, you can see. Sorry. <laughs> no problem. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm following your brief. Just interrupt us to make it more. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> you, you better keep to the script, Gustavo. <laughs> no, tell me. No, I was saying that it's true that you can see today a lot of uh, fintech startups appearing that they are born 
with the with uh, with the real the target of uh, working with uh, with incumbents. So I would say that uh, that would be more and more common. And of course, definitely open uh, business banking as a service or open platforms or uh, us, I would say the banks, exposing some of the assets and features for others to build uh, things on top is one thing definitely that is going to change uh, the way we do businesses uh, today. Um, but the, again, there are also other startups appearing that they are born thinking in, in, in helping us or being part of the, the value proposition of uh, uh, banks. So that would, I would say, increase. I would like to jump again. I don't know what you guys are saying. <laughs> there will be consolidation, <laughs> yeah, but probably not soon. Yeah, we will see it in each industry. Yeah. Actually, fintech is what five years old, six years old. Yeah, used to be 50 companies. Now there are 2,000. Yeah. yeah, there will be some consolidation, but we are still in the growth stage. You, you just yeah. said I'm not a competitor for the banks. I'm then, not. then I always think, uh, you know, there's a wolf in sheep clothes. <laughs> Is it possible with the ambition of Moven that you'd ever reach uh, the same size as, let's say, ABN AMRO or UBS? Is that something that... How many hundreds of years and how many acquisitions it took <laughs> now? A couple. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Exponential growth, that whole thing? Yeah. It's not the same market, yeah? It's not... We can show... So you can think of it, and this is the metaphor that I'm using in my mind, that in this uncharted territory of where financial services and banking will move through new technology, we are the scouts. Yeah? There are still the big armies moving, but we are 2,000 small scouts. We go outside and we see what's possible. We risk our lives, our corporate lives, because if we don't have a good idea, we die. Yeah? We explore in a canyon that's a dead end. Yeah? I never but, knew scouting was so uh, dangerous. Yeah, some of some companies, like for example, what is, uh, uh, what is the open talent? Yeah? They have a drone looking at the scouts to see what they're doing. Oh, that's a good one. Let's follow that path. Yeah? Some of them will make investments. They'll give money to the scouts to make sure that they have a longer search. Yeah? But we are in the searching business. Yeah? <laughs> I we search like for add, new business models. Yeah? I would like to add on your question about consolidation. If you, I'm convinced if you look from the consumer side, I think there will be a much more diversified offering from a consumer perspective. Uh, yeah. And I think in, in the end of the day, that's good because uh, it means it will be more colorful and there will be more different demands from the consumer perspective and they, it's more easy to uh, fulfill all these different perspectives. So for a long time, uh, banking more or, like, more or less looks the same and I think it's getting much more diversified. And I think that's for the financial sector as a, as a whole, that's good. And of course, there is competition, but I'd still believe that collaboration and partnering is the better way forward. Well, one point that is, I think, worth mentioning that so Gustavo was mentioning that there are a lot of companies that are, were born to serve the banks, but there are also increasing number of companies that were born not to serve the banks, so B2C companies uh, with good business models, sometimes not good, less good business models, and that are heading towards white label. Uh, models to serve the banks. And so it's really where we also see the shift between co competition and, uh, and collaboration. Is Fedor already having a wide label concept out Absolutely. there in the market? Yeah, yeah, for with, the past three years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we started uh, B2C, but we, uh, we went B2B uh, like three years ago. And we built our platform uh, to be open and so that we can sell to, to banks and fintech companies. So and like, like did Intel exactly inside. The same. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, and the movement exactly is exactly the, the same. same. And yeah, a we lot sell of customers in the US sell the same software worldwide to banks. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I think the question is, but what is the end game? So, so I, I, I see. I see um, consolidation. I mean, obviously, not all these fintechs will survive, and some of them will together go together, some of them will disappear, some of them will be bought by banks. But I think at the end, we will see a very different landscape. I think it will be much more into it will much more be an, an, an ecosystem, similarly what we what we kind of know from the from the telco yeah. platforms. Yeah. So so we will see infrastructure providers. We will see uh, kind of uh, you know like apps, kind of banks being on these infrastructure providers. We will see collaboration. We will see the same firms collaborate and, and, and fight against each other. Uh, look, uh, as in the phone, if you look Google and Apple, you know, their relationship, if you look at the relationship between Google and, and Uber, uh, I, I think it will, be, it, will, it will be very different. So uh, it will not be these silos and, and everybody just trying and having a radar in front of him. It will be, it will be an ecosystem much more complicated. Uh, will the consumer still be able to see the tree through the forest? Or the fourth through a tree? 
Uh, he doesn't. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean like all when these all these different offerings and apps and people offering me platforms and uh, who owns it, who am I doing business with? He he, can, he can handle it on on the iPhone. Why should he not handle it in, in the real world? It's 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 kind of some apps are useless and some of these offerings are also useless, but some of them are great and and co consumers they they know how to use it absolutely. But even the average the average person in 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 the US or in Western Europe has a relationship with 3.2 banks. Yeah, the point two is for the startups. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> and each one of them thinks like I'm the only bank. It's only me that I'm gonna make sure that they don't use any other bank. Surprise, surprise! It doesn't happen. It's not that kind of market. Yeah. Frank, how do you manage risk when you work with uh, fintechs? Um, Maybe via joint ventures, equity. What if all of a sudden the management of the fintech company you work with gets crazy, walks out? How, how can you manage those kind of risks on the outer circle of your business? <laughs> I think it's a, it's a good question. I, you could also say it's not a new risk. I, I also, people in my teams could get crazy and walk out of the of the office. So, yeah, you is, hire it, new is, ones. is it really a new a new, uh, new risk? And on the other hand, of course, uh, when d depending on in which area you collaborate, you uh, really talk about how are we going to manage risk. Eh? Your metaphor about relationships, uh, uh, probably it's also a good thing to talk about what if we are going to divorce, how are we going to share things. And if you can have a professional dialogue on that and uh, have that in a balanced way, I think you can manage as good as possible. And on the other hand, I'm a big believer in validated learning. So you shouldn't immediately start marrying. Maybe you should first uh, have a weekend together and then have a dinner and then uh, gradually maybe get into marriage. Yeah. So, and that's also a way to mitigate risks. Yeah. And there is a very simple rule for all the banks that work with startups to make sure that startups will continue to help them pay your bills. Yeah? <laughs> because if you pay your bills, we have money to pay salaries and people yeah. don't go. Yeah? Yeah. No better way than to end this panel discussion with the words, <laughs> yeah. pay your bills. <laughs> yeah. We're in the bank anyway. Yeah. We have 0.0, .0 seconds left in this panel discussion. I'm very sorry. But of course, we can still have a discussion while we're having uh, <laughs> drinks. Or you can stay here and enjoy some more uh, award pitches that will start in about 10 minutes in this same room. Members of the panel, thank you so yeah. much for your oh, contribution. Pleasure. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.